Okay, we've been getting some phone calls by some people about how to sharpen these grooves as if they were a serration and just ignore them. Uh, do never sharpen them, please uh, don't sharpen them. And then they were asking how to sharpen these and I told them it's like a 60 degree uh, three blade because it is. And so I, I, I guess I just take a lot of things for granted. Um, can you show them how to sharpen it? Yeah. So any 60 degree three blade, you just lay down on anything flat and you just go back and forth. Go ahead. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Sure. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Here, I'll check it. And then you're not looking really to shave your arm here because first of all, that's a whole different video. Um, you would have to cut this blade right off, lop the blade off to get it at the right angle to even do that uh, without a lot of stress and a lot of effort. You just look at to be able to remove thumbnail material. And to be honest with you, it's about edge bevel integrity again. Uh, a lot of the things we, we do um, in archery and modern modern ways of life kind of baffle me because it, it's about edge bevel integrity. So I don't know, you can't see that probably on the camera, but I have thumbnail material like dust everywhere. That's, that's perfect. And what you could do, you could take uh, a piece of uh, silicon carbide. That's the same kind of stuff on our paper wheels. This is just wet, dry sandpaper. And you put that on a piece of glass Pretend this is a piece of glass and same thing. One, two, three. You could go 30 times each side. You could go 10 times. Another thing guys like doing is they'll like going like this. They'll pull it back thinking they're going to make a burr and then break the burr off. 60 degree uh, double bevel three blade will never work like that. It's a waste of time. So you just, you could swish them in a circle. Uh, counterclockwise you can swish them in a circle clockwise um, you can go back and forth like this you could um, you could pull them all back even though it's a waste of time you can push it all forward even though that's a waste of time if you really want to you could go in a circle and at the end you can push forward you should count the number of strokes but even if you don't it's not the end of the world just like when I'm I'm sharpening my chainsaw, I don't really count strokes. I get it to where it needs to be. Um, but with these, to be honest, we, we would count the strokes. So we do tw like 20. And I count 20 and then flip it. Make sure you flip it the same way. A uh, kindergartner could sharpen any 60 degree bevel three blade. The one thing guys like to do, they'll like to try to turn it into a 44 degree bevel to make it have higher perceived sharpness. Anytime you reduce the number of the bevel, you reduce the edge bevel integrity. There's an inverse relationship with edge bevel integrity and perceived sharpness. So 60 degree double bevel is where it's at. If you're out in the field, you pro I would not carry this out in the field. We sell these, you could buy them from us. I wouldn't carry anything out in the field. I try to carry as little as I could. I would kill something with this broad end and I'd keep killing stuff with it. Uh, or if we were like killing deer for the city, I just keep using the same broadhead. I wouldn't even touch it to anything. And with a planned mechanical cutting, you never need to. But if you want to, you could take this out in your backpack and you can open these up. And it's the same same type, type thing in reverse. You could hold it with the, on your arrow and you're just going to go flat. Just let the weight of it go right on the broadhead. You're just staying flat. If you really wanted to, you could hold your um, DMT diaphold that we sell, and you could just run it, swish it around, count the number, do it on the other side. And for the guys that want to travel light, you travel light with one of these. I would never carry something like this, though. I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't carry much. I'd carry something maybe that I could purify water with. I wouldn't worry about carrying something like this. But some of you guys... Your, this is your thing, that's your jam. Go ahead, go buy these off us, 
buy them off of Amazon, uh, carry those around. The guys that are really anal about wanting these sharpened, you just, this is how you sharpen them. It's all there is to it. But I'm telling you, it's edge bevel integrity. If you have a broadhead that is designed where you get it so sharp that you could split a hair in half, shave your arm hair, but put it in your quiver and it's dull, it does not matter how much you sharpen it. It will suck. It will go through the whole body cavity dull. And it will kill by haphazard mechanical cutting. Or the edge bevel chatter. Or, or it will just go through dull. And it will still kill the animal. Though. So to me it's not about sharpness. It's about edge bevel integrity. And... Um, the edge bevel retention with this planned mechanical cutting, the edge bevel retention is forever. Just like on our stone points that we have, the edge bevel retention on those are forever. The edge bevel retention on my 600 grain scientific method, 168 thousandths thick blade, 40 degree bevel, the edge bevel retention is not there on an animal even. And that has the most edge bevel retention of any broadhead ever made on this planet. So the only way to get your edge bevel retention in a, a broadhead application is with planned mechanical cutting, period. So this is a little bit different than our stone points, obviously, but um, this patent pending jumbo broadhead, check it out. Stop stressing about sharpening stuff. Um, any three blade broadhead, here, show them how they do it. If you send these back to us, all jacked up when you sharpen them, then we're probably, we're just gonna quit. We're gonna give up, right? Yeah. Um, that was more of the single bevels. Every pack of single bevels I would sell, what? Uh, half the guys would ruin the same day. I might as well have burnt the money on fire. You don't gotta stress it. You just, 60 degree bevel. You don't make a burr, wire edge, nothing. It'll probably do this through several animals. For several years, it will do this. 123,000 thick blade. Uh, I think the 125 grain, 62,000 thick blades, 60 degree bevel. It's as robust as it gets for your edge bevel integrity. You got anything to tell me? No. Why is there glitter all over the table? You know? Uh, this. Oh, maybe it is from these, but you got glitter all over from some project you're doing. Oh, oh that's okay. <laughs> maybe it was from me. Thanks. <laughs> Love you. Yeah, that's it. We don't even know how to do social media. I can't even, uh, I can't even stomach modern society. <laughs> We're good, yeah. It's good, yeah. I've been getting in trouble <laughs> by my mom <laughs> because I have glitter all over the table. Yeah. But my dad just told me the truth. I'm sorry, honey. That <laughs> is from his broadheads. Broadheads. Yeah. So, you know, maybe don't do them on your dining room table. Um, one thing with the tool steel is over the years, we've been doing this for a while now, um, without any advertisements or anything, or much social media or whatever, you know? Yeah. yeah we've been doing that part wrong. <laughs> we'll probably keep doing that part wrong. Um, with the tool steel, it's a lot like fruit and vegetables. And so you put tens of thousands of dollars into it and it rusts right in front of you. So We've done all these things with different platings and uh, PVD, um, all these things, top secret stuff. <laughs> so with these, with the plating, you really just, you just don't want to do it here because it does. It looks like glitter with the plating. And the plating is only going to come off the bevel. And then when the plating comes off the bevel, you got, it'll oxidize there. But these won't oxidize... Um, over the years for our clients that have 
run our broadheads for years, these won't oxidize like those would. And when you think about those, the way they would oxidize would be like a ball peen hammer, you know, from years and years ago. It still has structural integrity. And I guess that's another thing that's really hard um, to wrap my head around. There's so many, there's so many things. Um, you know, you you can't make uh, stainless steel um, have a shock resistance. So guys will want stainless steel, but a certain Rockwell hardness, or guys will want um, the highest perceived sharpness, thickest blade, 60 degree bevel, or they'll want um, the most edge bevel integrity in the history of humankind in an 18 degree double bevel with 20 thousandths thick blades so those 20 thousandths thick blades could sneak through the animal or and stuff like this and it basically just comes down to the laws of physics with broadheads and um i'm really proud of this plating i'm really proud of what we do and this will keep you guys that where it drives you nuts to see the rust yeah, they will rust, they will oxidize, but with this pl new plating, I think you'll like it a lot. And um, we're really proud of it. We'll put a lot into it. But when you do this on your table, your daughter will get in trouble uh, by your wife every day for having glitter all over. I banned the glitter in school. No glitter. Can't stand that stuff. <laughs> Looks like glitter everywhere, huh? And it will it will stick to it will stick to your table. It will stick to things more than actual glitter. Um it's good stuff. It's very good stuff. Very proud of it. So that's your what well, other tip of the day. Don't use broadheads on table on kitchen tables. <laughs>
Uh, the dude, unless you had an artery or a vein, you know, you could get a good blood trail with a field point, but that one and three quarter inch cut, and the deer uh, left a lot of blood, but it only went 30, 35 yards. It died in uh, like 1,001, 1,002, it was dead. Uh, usually they die in sight. You still want to get the pass through, but this, look at that. Oh my God. Yeah, I'll boil these. Uh, I'll boil this out too. But yeah, that is a big gaping uh, hole. I'll show you the other side too, but I'm too, I'm too whooped. Uh, I gotta get this dragged out of here. And uh, I like uh, gutting them out somewhere else and I like not talking. So right now I'm not um, breaking my gutting out rule, but I'm breaking my talking rule. I don't know how to YouTube hunters do it or whisper even no idea how they do it and still see deer yeah my daughter said we i forgot to say go to bishoparchery.com like comment and oh that subscribe. yeah that stuff too uh modern society <laughs>